Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make this really cool 3D weather landing page. So we're going to use Splice to create the 3D and then integrate it to the website using Framer. So let's get into it. So here we are in Splice and I am creating a new Splice project. So first let's remove the rectangle and then create a sphere by clicking on this list right here and select sphere and click on the screen and make it bigger like this. And then let's go to the right panels and click on this material panels and you can see that we have a lot of different material presets here. Uh, so I'm going to select this ceramic and marble category. And here you can see there's a lot of different colors and texture combinations. So I'm going to select something that looks closer to the sun like probably this one. And then let's click here to open the material properties. And then let's adjust the base color layers to something a little bit more uh, vibrant. And then let's open this matcap layers and I'm going to change this one to something a little bit more matte uh, like this. Maybe it's a little bit too bright. Uh, let's try this. So yeah, something like this so it doesn't look too shiny. And then next thing I'm going to create a new layer for this materials and for this layer I'm going to switch it to image and I'm going to use this AI generator to uh, generate some textures for our sphere. So basically you can just type in anything and it will generate for you. So let's try something like ground surface textures and then it's going to give you something like this. So I think it's looking pretty cool. You can try with a lot of different keywords combination to come up with different results. So after a few tries, I think this one uh, probably is going to work. So I'm going to go back here and adjust the size a little bit. So it's look a little bit bigger and I'm going to apply an overlay blending mode uh, so it can blend into the rest of the materials. And another very cool feature of this material is that if you open this lighting panels and make sure that you are in the font shading type. Uh, and down here you can see there's a bump map option. So basically it's using this image right here to create a bump map. So you can just select it and you see that it's creating a more realistic rough surface. And this bump map works independently from the image layer. So if I turn this off, you can see that it still have this bump effect. So it will give you a lot of control to achieve the look and feel that you are trying to do. And let's go back to the lighting panels. And from here, you can even like increase the shininess. So you can see that it's still have that rough effect, but it's a little bit shinier. And you can also like increase or decrease the intensity of the bump. So you can see it's looking much more realistic than without the bump effect. And another cool thing is that I can even go back to the image layer and generate a different textures and it will automatically update the bump textures. So yeah, I think this one is even better than the other ones. It's looking really good. So I'm going to go with this one and moving forward to the next step. So now let's open this noise panels and from here you can adjust the size of the noise. Uh, so I want it to look a little bit bigger, maybe 200. So we have something like this and you can also change the colors. So I want some area to be more orange and a little bit darker like this. So yeah, I think this working really well. It creates this really realistic uh, sphere. So I think we're good with this. So um, another thing that I don't like the way that the light is just kind of shining directly to the front of the sun. So I'm going to adjust it maybe a little bit to the size. So yeah, something like this and let's um, reduce the intensity a little bit. All right, so I think we're good for the sun. So let's uh, move forward to making the clown. So let's open the library from the bottom left. And from here, you can search for the clown uh, model. So here what we have, I think this is looking good. So let's just drag it into the scene. So we have a clown here. So let's make it bigger and move it in front of the sun. And then on the right panel, let's open the clown textures and I'm going to switch this colors layer to depth and open the property panels and use this handle here to control how the uh, depth radiant works. So I'm going to create this kind of a translucent uh, look and feel. So let's change the color to white and for the middle one, so I'm going to reduce the opacity by zero. So now we have something like this. 
So let's close this and go back to the layer panels. And from here, I'm going to create a new layer. So for this one, I'm going to select glass and move it down below the depth channel. And then let's click on this to open the property panels and increase the blur to 30. So you can see that it's looking so much better now. So next thing I want to do is to make it a little bit more randomly distorted. So I'm going to create another layers. And for this one, I'm going to select displays. And then let's click here to open the display property panels. And from here, let's switch this to simplex fracture and increase the intensity by 20. So now we have something like this. So next, I want to create some water drops. So let's just go back to the library and just uh, drag this icon to the scene. And with this one, I only need the water drop. So let's remove the cloud. And then I'm going to change the color of the water drop to something more white. And then next, let's create a backdrop from the list here. And then scale it up really big like this. And then change the color to something like this. And you can even use the depth channel instead of the color channel to create this kind of a fake shadows uh, right beneath the whole sun and cloud setup like this. All right, so this is what it finally looked like. So I'm happy with this overall look and feel. So now let's move forward to the animation process. So first, let's make the sun spinning around. So let's click here to create the state. So we have the choose state. So with the second state selected, I'm going to set the rotation value to uh, minus 360. So it will uh, create a full rotation loop. Um, so now let's create an event. So we're going to start event and click transition. And from this, let's transition from base state to state and make sure to select linear animation and for the duration maybe something like uh, 10 seconds and down here let's select the infinite loop uh, that's it so let's click here to preview and now it's spinning really nicely so next for the cloud uh, make sure to select the layer inside the group and then unlink the material so it can be animated uh, via different state so let's go back up here and create a two state. So with the second state selected, I'm going to uh, go to the display channels and change this movement uh, value to 50 and create an event. So we're going to go with start event and select transitions. So we're going to transition from base state to state and same here, linear animations and duration should be 10 seconds. And down here, let's select infinite. And for this one, I'm going to use a ping pong reverse. So let's give it a look. Uh, click here. So now you can see it created this really nice uh, display transformation animation. So finally, for the water drop, I'm going to animate this water drop, but we just need to use one. So I'm going to remove the other one and keep only one water drop here. So I'm going to create two state for this water drop. For the first state, let's move it inside the clown. And for the second state, we're going to move it down to this position. So we have the two different state with two different positions. And with the second state selected, uh, let's unlink the material so we can uh, animate the property inside. Um, so with, you know, again, with the second state, I'm going to reduce all of these layer opacity to zero. So now we have a choose state like this. Uh, so next, let's create an event for it. Uh, so we're going to set up the same as the other ones, except for this one. I'm going to uh, select the animation type is um, ease out. So it would go like this. Um, so looking pretty good, but I want it to repeat um, over again. And let's go back here and select infinite. And then we have something like this. So now all we need to do is to duplicate this one into a multiple water drop. And 
And one trick here is to add a slight delay to some of the water drop to make it appear more randomly. And after that, this is what we have. So final step, I'm going to create a point light and use this to make the scene a little bit more kind of a glowy effect. So let's move the light to this position and make sure to turn off the shadows. And change the color to a more yellow color like this. And then you can adjust the position of the light until it looks more natural. And then this is the final result look like. Alright, so lastly, let's click here to export and uh, I think it's good. So let's go to place setting and turn these off. And then just update the public URL. And then just go back to the overview tab and copy this link. Alright, so here we are in Framer and you can see that I already have this UI layout uh, set up here. So all we need to do next is to go to the Insert tab and search for the Embed Components and then just drag it into the screen. And then make sure that it is aligned properly and also distributed so it can be responsive. And then finally just paste the slide link that we just copied to this import form and then voila, it works like magic. And then finally, let's click here to preview it full screen. So yeah, it's looking really good on my computer screen. So this is the end of my tutorial today. So I hope you find this one helpful and I will see you in the next one. All right.